Hi friends, I'm Sherry and this is Gardening in the North and I thought I would do a, a video that's a little bit different than what I normally do. I need to harvest some of my calendula as well as some of my bachelor buttons and I thought why not bring you along with me. We can chat about some of the things that have gone eh, not so great in the garden and some things that have gone really great while I harvest them. So first I want to talk about calendula. I think that this has probably been my favorite thing this season and the reason I say that is there is so much that you mm -hmm. can do with calendula flowers starting with mm -hmm. adding it to tea blends. So for those of you that know me personally know that I have been blending my own tea blends. I have three of them. I've sold them. I have a lot of positive feedback from them and one of them contains calendula. So I'm really excited that I get to grow my own. Okay, I had to change the direction that I had you facing because all of a sudden the sun came out and I wasn't sure you could actually see me. Um, so what I was going to say about the calendula is that I have been harvesting this now for about over a month and I'm literally harvesting from it every second day. So every second day I come out here, I take the, the flowers that are open and then I take them inside and I pop them in the dehydrator and dry them. I think now I've done about a pint and a half and that is me pushing them into that jar. And so one of the things I have going on in the kitchen right now is I took um, two cups of dried calendula. I put them in um, a mason jar and I covered it with sweet almond mm -hmm. oil. I have about six and a half weeks left um, before I can actually start using that oil. I'm basically infusing it with all of the amazing medicinal properties that calendula offers and I'm going to make a face cream out of it. So I'm really excited to try that. This is the dried calendula and sweet almond oil that I mentioned. I've had precancer spots on my face. And I have a form of rosacea that is due to stress. So a lot of the times different creams that my doctor will give me or medication do not work. And so calendula has a great anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer property that I thought would be great to try as a natural remedy. Something that I made from my garden. So if you have a little bit of space, I would highly recommend growing calendula. Now, let's talk about the mistakes I made with the calendula though. As you can see, this is a pretty big plant and it just keeps getting bigger. And so the mistakes that I made with this is where I planted it. And so had I really done a really good job on my research in the sense that figuring out how big this plant got, I probably wouldn't have put it in this uh, raised bed in this location. And so behind me or to my right is where the sun is starting to go down. And so that's the west side. And I have all of this calendula in front of my pepper plants. And I probably, I shouldn't say probably, I wouldn't have done that. I would have put it on the other side. So calendula is a cut and come again. And basically what that means is that the more you cut, the more the flowers will grow. So this plant has a job and that job is to produce seeds. And if I was to let this whole plant go to seed, it would stop producing the flowers for me. But because I keep taking the flowers, I mean, there is the odd one that has gone to seed, but because I keep taking 95% of the flowers, this plant doesn't think that it's done its job yet and it's going to keep producing until it doesn't. Now, it has been about a month that I've been uh, harvesting flowers off of this and I suspect that it will do that all summer long as long as I come out here every second or third day and harvest them. Before we head over to the other 
calendula patch, I just want to take a minute to show you how you can save seeds when you're ready to do that. So this here was a flower that probably got missed. It was pretty bushy here and I probably didn't see it. And I started to see it after the fact going to seed and I thought, why not let it? So if I just pull it off, And those are all the seeds. Now I think see I could go and plant these and they would grow calendula flowers, calendula plants. So the way that I like to harvest these flowers mm -hmm. is I just use a little pair of scissors and literally come up underneath the head and snip it into the container that I'm using. I have tried to snip them or hold on to the flower heads and then I get greedy and I start putting more in my hand and before you know it I'm dropping them in between the plant and that's hard to get. It's very bushy and thick in here so this way seems to work the best for me. And so let's take a minute to talk about this pile of calendula and where I have it. Had I really thought about this pile as well, I would not have planted it in this bed in this location. So now behind me is south and in front of this calendula I have beets and unfortunately those beets are never going to get to the size that they need to be because this calendula is so big. This calendula started growing taller before the beets did. So the beets didn't get the amount of sun that they needed. They are growing and I am going to get beets, but they're not going to be the size that um, they should be. That's okay. There's always next year. So I just come out like this and I take all of them. Now I'm going to leave the ones that aren't quite open yet. They'll open up again tomorrow. I usually come out here around 3.30 and they're all open. It's later than that. It's almost 6.30 now. So some of them are going to be closing up. I never come out and harvest them in the morning and the reason for it is there's a lot of dew on the plants and so they're wet. The flowers are wet and usually the flowers are closed up which means that if I'm going to be cut, cutting them off and taking them in to dehydrate them, it's just going to take longer because they're wet. So I just prefer not to do it like that. So I wish I could remember the variety names. When I'm editing this video, I will put it down below. I'll look for the seed packages and put it down below for you. But look at how beautiful and vibrant these are and so this one has like a really pretty dark orange center um let me see here this one isn't open as much as it sh i want it to be but it's really pretty we have the nice big yellow ones of course they're starting to close up because i've cut them i should have showed you earlier here's a really pretty yellow one so my reason my sole reason for growing, I don't know if you can see this, let me see. I don't know if you're going to be able to see how beautiful this burgundy bathroom button is. But the reason that I'm growing these is solely for the purpose of color in my tea blends. So bathroom buttons are edible and they don't have the same type of um, medicinal properties as calendula. They're still good for you, but a lot of the times when you're making a tea blend with herbs and flowers, they're, they're not very colorful. And so my thought was, why not grow some batcher buttons? I can add them into the more boring looking tea blends just to pretty them up. I mean, who doesn't want to drink a beautiful looking tea blend?
take a look at how beautiful that is. Look at the colors. So vibrant. This has got to be one of my favorite things, if not my favorite at the moment in my garden. Thanks for spending your time with me.